The Byte Show is listener supported at thebyteshow.com. Hello, everybody. This is George Ann Hughes, and this is The Byte Show. And we are very blessed to have Joseph P. Farrell with us. And Dr. Farrell has a website. It is GizaDeathStar.com. And on that website, there is a PayPal button. Please make use of it. We must keep Dr. Farrell in research materials. And they are expensive, (laughs) especially for the kind of research that he does. So make use of that PayPal button. And tonight, I think we're going to talk about money. (laughs) Hi, Joseph. Hi, Georgianne. Thanks thanks for having me back. And and, uh, thank you for that little plug. I wanted to thank everybody uh, for the donations and website memberships because it it has really helped. And work out her pay pal button, too, folks, because it's expensive to pay for all this bandwidth for these Yeah, shows. it is. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, thank you for having me back on, Georgia. Well, of course, any time. Well, Joseph, uh-huh. there's some very weird goings on <laughs> um, uh, in the financial world or... <laughs> What what we 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 can't really even call it the financial world. It's right. kind of a world all by itself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, given the behavior of, some of those people, mm-hmm. I would I would wholeheartedly concur with that. Yeah, uh, we were talking and we decided to do this show kind of on a spur of the moment, so we're sort of winging this. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> What got all this started was were, were the stories of all of these fake bearer bond scandals. And let's go back in history to 2009, when the Italian Guarda di Finanza apprehended two Japanese gentlemen making their way to a Swiss town, Swiss-Italian town called Chiasso. It's at the very southern tip of of Switzerland, uh, just over the border from Italy. And these Japanese men were carrying a bunch of counterfeit securities denominated in billion-dollar increments. And and I have on my website a series of articles. They can Google the Japanese bearer bond stories on my website and pull up the the blogs about it and see pictures of these so-called bonds. And for our purposes, we we need to note, first of all, that the amount recovered by the Italian police was $134 billion, with a B, of counterfeit bearer bonds, all right? Mm -hmm. Now, these Japanese men were apparently, and, and this should raise alarm bells right away, were apparently questioned by the Italian authorities, And then the next thing we know, they show up back in Japan, according to some Internet sources. So in other words, they were arrested and released. Okay. Okay. Uh Aha. You know, kind of, you know, if you or I were to counterfeit $134 billion. (laughs) We'd be under the jail. Yeah, we'd be under the jail. (laughs) We we wouldn't be in the jail. We'd be under it. (laughs) Oh, gosh. But uh, for our purposes, what we're going to do tonight, it's important to note that these bearer bonds, and you can go on my website and see pictures of them, were on the front, the the obverse of the bond showed a picture of, of President Kennedy, you know, a typical uh, money sort of depiction. Mm-hmm. And there is a red seal on the front which states that the bond originates from a group called Money World. Money World. Yes, which is headquartered, incidentally, in Asia. Uh-huh. This will be part of our story. And on the back, on the reverse of the bond, there is a picture of the moon. Then in the center, the space shuttle. Uh-huh. 
and then on the right, the lunar excursion module oh. from the Apollo moon landings. Oh, my. Oh, my. <laughs> okay, the plot thickens, all right? Yeah. Now, here's the thing. These, these bonds, in my opinion, are self-evidently fake. All right, the, the red seal is designed to look or give the appearance of, of the red U.S. Treasury seal, but it's from this outfit in Asia called Money World. Uh-huh. All right. Now, let's leap forward to Spain toward the end of last year, 2011. Near Barcelona, the Spanish police, in cooperation with the U.S. Secret Service, basically intercepted yet another counterfeit bearer bond ring. All right. Mm -hmm. This time, the bearer bonds, once again, were denominated in billion-dollar increments. Oh. And I have a white paper in the members area on my website. I'm not, I'm not trying to plea for more members just to go to, to see this white paper, but I'm referencing it simply because... In that white paper, I show the pictures of, of these so-called financial instruments, all right? Yeah. Well, the, the, these billion-dollar bearer bonds were made off of the U.S. $100,000 bill. Huh. Now, most people don't know that the United States ever minted, much less circulated, a $100,000 bill, but it did. I know they uh, minted, I think, at $10,000. No, there was a, there was a $100,000 bill with the picture of, of President Woodrow Wilson on the obverse. Yeah. And then on the back, uh, you know, the, the usual uh, filigree design. But but these, these billion-dollar denominated bearer bonds were based off of the $100,000 bill. They are also, and here is a key point, they are also not only bearer bonds, but they are gold certificate bearer bonds. In other words, bearer bonds backed by gold. Oh, ho. Oh, ho. The plot just thickened yeah. considerably. Yeah. And the amount that the Spanish authorities seized was some two trillion dollars of of these bonds wow. series 1934 huh. all right now here's where the story gets interesting as if it's not interesting enough already these bonds were seized along with bundles of one hundred thousand dollar bills you know, which would be, you know, take a hundred times a hundred thousand dollars, and that's each bundle of a hundred thousand dollar bills would be ten million dollars. Yeah. The bundles ha were wrapped with metal banding, you know, a bank band mm -hmm. that was stamped J. P. Morgan Chase. Oh. All right. With the, and here's a key point: with the modern J. P. Morgan Chase corporate logo imprinted on these bands. Oh, my goodness. Also seized were envelopes, velvet envelopes of gold, mint-proof gold coins. Oh. And all of this, this whole stash, was seized in strong boxes, which I also pictured in the, in the white paper in my members' area, in strong boxes from the Federal Reserve Bank of Dallas, Texas. Hmm. All right. Now, my point here in stressing the strong box, this is going to be a key part of the story. The strong boxes themselves are also claimed by American officials to be fake. So, in other words, let's stop and pause here just for a moment. We have two different instances now of fake bearer bonds in billion dollar denominations, so we're told. Yeah. In the first instance, the Japanese are, are counterfeiting these, these Kennedy bearer bonds. And in the second case, in the second instance, it's the Woodrow Wilson gold, gold certificate, uh, gold-backed bearer bonds hmm. from the Federal Reserve, Series 1934, all right? Yeah. Now, along with the, the effort that it takes to counterfeit that, someone, whoever these counterfeiters were, also counterfeited the strong boxes of the Federal Reserve Bank of Dallas. Hmm. In other words, a lot of effort went into this if we are to buy the story yeah. that 
the government's saying that all these bonds are counterfeit. All right? So let's stop and consider what this means. Question number one, who has been prosecuted for counting, counterfeiting these bonds? Hmm. Answer, so far, nobody. So far. All right? Number two, why? let's accept for the sake of argument that somebody has gone to all this trouble to counterfeit all these securities and the strong boxes to transport them around. Yeah. Now, why do you do that unless there is a market for them? Wow. And if there's a market for them, then that must mean that these securities are based on something genuine floating around out there. Wow. Otherwise, there'd be no market for them. Yeah. All right. And it's almost as if they wanted to get caught. All right. Now, okay, hang on. You're you're reading my mind. Yeah. You're, you're way ahead of me here. Oh, now let's now let's go to a third incident that happened just last month of this year, in February of 2012. Okay. We're back in Italy once again. Oh. <laughs> and this time. <coughs> it's six trillion dollars. Oh. Again, in billion dollar denominated gold backed 1934 U.S. Federal Reserve bearer bond securities. And again, these bearer bonds are based on the U.S. $100,000 Woodrow Wilson dollar bill. Uh-huh. Okay, so in other words, now we have a second incident that is very similar to the Spanish incident, only this time, the strong boxes that these bonds were seized in were from the Federal Reserve Bank of Chicago. Oh, oh my goodness. So now we have two different Federal Reserve Banks. Yeah. We have someone going to the effort to counterfeit billion-dollar gold-backed bearer bonds from the Federal Reserve dated 1934 and going to all the effort to concoct strong boxes to counterfeit even the boxes. Wow. All right? Now, let's step back. We've got three different instances now of fake bearer bond securities. The first instance, the Japanese bear bond scandal, which was a mere $134 billion, with self-evidently faked bear bonds from Money World coming out of Asia. And then we have two incidences of Federal Reserve strong boxes being seized with alleged $1 billion denominated gold-backed Woodrow Wilson bear bonds from the Federal Reserve Bank of Chicago and the Federal Reserve Bank of Dallas, for the sum total of some eight trillion dollars. <laughs> Whoa! Okay. Oh my God! Are we with me so far? Oh boy! Oh boy, indeed. Oh. All right. Now let's go to one other little data point on this mad financial quest, and that is that in the last year, in 2011, and all the way up to this year, I think there is a fellow in the British House of Lords by the name of Lord Blackheath, all right? Yeah. And Lord Blackheath, you you can Google his name on YouTube and see him making these addresses in the House of Lords, or for that matter, you can Google an outfit called Hansard, H-A-N-S-A-R-D. Hansard is the company in Great Britain that publishes the transcripts for the House of Lords, like our congressional record, all right? They're the ones that publish it. And you can can Google them and, and pull up the statements, the transcript of of Lord Blackheath making these statements in the House of Commons. In a nutshell, what what Lord Blackheath has been saying in the House of Commons is that he was contacted by a group of people that he calls Foundation X, all right, that says that they are sitting on top of vast amounts of money and they want to help turn this money over to Great Britain to help bail it out of its difficulties and provide all sorts of infrastructure, construction, and and repair, and renewal, and so on and so forth, no strings attached. And Blackheath gets up in the House of Commons and and talks about the fabulous amounts of money that these people are talking about, all of which, incidentally, is, guess what, gold-backed. Oh, dear. And the response of of British officialdom was, okay, well, if this is all gold-backed, then that would mean several 
orders of magnitude of tonnage of gold above what the official statistics of gold mined since the beginning of human history show. Oh, my gosh. So now we have yet another conundrum, and that is that we have faked Federal Reserve gold-backed bearer bonds out there in the sum of trillions of dollars. Then we have completely different source in, in a peer of, of Great Britain in the House of Lords saying that, all right, we've got a discrepancy between official amounts of gold, which are in the thousands of tons, and the amount of gold implied by all of this stuff that he's uncovered that would be gold in the amount of several hundred thousand tons. Oh, oh. Now imagine releasing that gold on the market suddenly. Oh boy. What would happen to the price of gold? It would go down, down. It down. would it would it would nosedive yeah. overnight. Yeah. All right. Now so I'm sitting here thinking, George Ann, what in the name of sense is going on here? Well, I've already indicated that we have a market for false securities in these astronomical amounts. And you you don't go to all this effort to counterfeit securities unless there is already in place a really existing market for them. Yeah. So that implies that there is a genuine basis for these things, if indeed these things aren't themselves genuine, which yeah. is another huge question, and that we're simply being lied to by the government. Well, right. that's possible. Too. And, you know, of course it's possible. Of course it's possible. <laughs> oh. So we're looking at a hidden system of finance, oh. is what we're looking at, that is in the trillions of dollars. Wow. And somehow it is coupled to a lot of gold. Mm -hmm. And somebody, Lord Blackheath Foundation X, or whatever you wish to call it, knows about it. Now let's go back and do a little dot connecting. Okay. During World War II, the Empire of Japan mounted a plunder op operation in Asia, largely in China, but also elsewhere in Asia that they conquered, uh, Malaysia, Indonesia, and so on. And the operation was called Operation Golden Lily. Oh. It was under the direct command of Prince Chichibu of of the Japanese Imperial House. Uh, I think he was either a brother or cousin to, to uh, Emperor Hirohito. And, of course, he had Japanese military officers uh, under com under his command in this top-secret operation, one of which, of course, was, was uh, General Tomoyuki Yamashita, all right, the, the, the uh, Japanese general that... that uh, blitzed the British out of Malaysia so quickly and, and then later took over uh, as military governor in the Philippines. Well, General Yamashita, all of this gold from China, and here's an important part of the story that people need to understand. The official estimates of gold in the world never included Russian production nor the Orient. Uh -huh. So there's vast sums of gold and other bullion and precious gems that the Japanese during their invasion of China, and then later, of course, during the war, uh, uh, the Far East, Indonesia, Malaysia, and, and uh, Indochina, and so on, that the Japanese literally plundered and melted down and then stored in secret uh, treasure locations throughout Southeast Asia and primarily in the Philippine Islands. All right? Yeah. And there has been a, a number of, of books that have been written on how the United States basically, after the war, mounted a secret operation under the Office of Policy Coordination from Frank Wisner with, and went in there and recovered all of this gold that the Japanese had cached away in, in the Philippines. And the man in charge of that, incidentally, folks, was, was General Ed Lansdale. All right. Now, those of you who know the name will know the significance of, of that little revelation. So we're looking at vast sums of, of oriental gold that were taken out of the market, taken off the books, quite literally, 
prior to and during World War II, and then afterwards. All right, and some of this fell into the hands of U.S. intelligence agencies. Now, on the other side of the world, what do we have going on in Europe? Well, we have the same thing. The Nazis are are literally pulling teeth from people yes. in the concentration camps and melting down the silver and the gold, and in some cases even the platinum, mm-hmm. to to create vast amounts of bullion reserves. Not to mention the bullion reserves that they get of the countries that they conquer. Yeah. All right. And as we've talked about before, at the end of the war, this means that the Nazis are sitting on top of a huge pile of, of hard assets in the form of bullion, in the form of gemstones, and so on and so forth, in addition to a huge pile of liquid cash assets, some of which, incidentally, they've counterfeited themselves. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Why am I not surprised? Well, this is an important point that that people are overlooking, I think, in trying to figure out these recent bearer bond scandals, because Mm -hmm. the Nazis during World War II mounted an operation called Operation Bernhardt, Mm -hmm. and it was directly the inspiration of, guess who, Martin Bormann. And and the idea was that they got some of the best counterfeiters that they had put into prison or the concentration camps and, and essentially freed them and said, well, here, we need you to go to work and counterfeit British pound notes and American dollars and so on and so forth. <clears throat> and to this day, they don't really know how many uh, British pounds were counterfeited by the Nazis. These counterfeits were so good that the British were unable to detect them and, and essentially had to redesign their entire currency wow. after the war. And, okay. and the amount of pounds in circulation is speculated to have run into the hundreds of millions of pounds. Oh. So in other words, we have an organized operation on the part of the Nazis <clears throat> to counterfeit uh, in terms of economic war, to counterfeit the securities of, of their enemies and the currencies of their enemies. Now, let's step back from all of this and also recall that I've I've mentioned on your show, I've blogged about it, I've mentioned it on other shows, that the purpose, in my opinion, of the Bilderberg Group was to take all of this Nazi loot and negotiate a kind of a post-war detente with the Western bankers and move all this loot into the Western banks off the books. Hmm which the bankers could use as a secret reserve and vastly expand expand their their credit-making ability. So in other words, at the end of World War II, as a result of this deal between the Nazis and the Western elites, you had put into place a hidden system of finance. And the backing for it, in both the Nazi and the Japanese case, is all of this bullion plundered from Europe and, and the Far East. Oh, my goodness. So we're dealing with a hidden system of finance. Now, as I've said on many, many occasions, when you're dealing with the likes of Martin Borman, Mr. Rockefeller, or Mr. Rothschild, you're dealing with Dick Cheney without the warmth and charm. Right. <laughs> All that money is going to come with a lot of strings attached, and if you can't pay up the marker when the bill comes due, you're in a whole heap load of trouble. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. Now... Let's look what we have going on here. Let's assume with these these counterfeit bond scandals, George Ann, that we're dealing with what the government says they are, with counterfeits. Well, as I've already said, we're dealing with a market for them, and that means that they reflect something genuine. Yes. All right. Now, here's the problem. Most of these bonds are coming out of the Far East these counterfeits, if indeed the story we're being told is true. So in other words, I'm thinking, number one, that if they're counterfeits, someone is sending messages to the Western financial elite, Uh and the message is, we know all about this hidden system of finance (laughs) to the extent that we know the banks involved, we know the types of securities involved, we know the the purpose for which it was created. Hmm. And I think that purpose is hinted at 
in those original, definitely fake bearer bonds, in the original Japanese bearer bond scandal, because what's on the front? President Kennedy. Uh-huh. What's on the back? The moon, oh, the space shuttle, and the lunar excursion module. Oh, my. In other words, if there is this hidden tier of finance, as these bond scandals are suggesting, then the hidden tier of finance is vast. It is huge. Yeah. And someone is sending the message by, 19, you know, dating all these things 1934, that this goes way back. Yeah. And the purpose of it may be, then, for some secret project of a breakaway civilization. Ho, 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 ho. Ho, 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 ho. The only other thing that I can think of, in other words, what I'm I'm implying with that is that the sums of money are vast enough to require a huge project that they're using all this money for. Yeah. All right? And someone else is in the game and knows all about it and is sending them messages. Oh, Oh, my goodness. This is the only thing I can conclude. At some point, some, and the only people that I can think that would know of this hidden system of finance are, well, first of all, the people that the gold was stolen from, namely, yeah. guess who, the Chinese, yeah. <laughs> the Malaysians, the Indonesians, the Filipinos, you know. Yeah. And over in Europe, of course, all the victims of, of, of the Nazi era. And the only other people that would know about it are the people involved in that hidden system of finance, namely the post-war Nazi international and the Western bankers. All right. Now, the, the Western bankers certainly aren't going to expose themselves. Right. But if the Nazi faction ever had the perception that they'd been double-crossed, would they expose it? You betcha. Oh, brother. And guess what? Incidentally, just as a little tidbit on that score, Germany is already making noises like they want to repatriate their gold reserves in this country. Yes. <laughs> you know? yeah. Yeah. So, you know, the Germans, in other words, are sending a message that we don't really trust the New York Federal Reserve to keep all of our gold safe for us. We want it back. <laughs> well, Great Britain did the same thing. Great Britain and Venezuela, you know. Yeah. And, so in other words, all the, all, the, all the nations of the world that have any significant gold reserves are telegraphing messages to the Federal Reserve, which supposedly is the point of origin for all these fake bearer bonds packed oh, in gold. Gosh. <laughs> okay. Oh, my gosh. Now, the only other thing that I can think of for this huge hidden tier of finance is it's either got to be a secret project, and, you know, one requiring a lot of money, and space certainly would. Mm-hmm. Or this hidden tier of finance represents some sort of fallback position for the Western elite. And in expose, in other words, a, a financial system ready to come into play when the public one collapses. Wow. All right. Now, if that's the case, then whoever's sending the message to the Western bankers, they're saying, uh oh, we know all about this and you know, by exposing it, that plan's not going to work either. <laughs> oh, <laughs> big games. Yeah, it's a, yes. In yeah. other words, in other words, George Ann, I don't think in all honesty you can look rationally at these bearer bond scandals and conclude anything else other than they are the profoundest indicator we have had yet in recent memory, that there's a huge hidden system of finance. Yeah. And that, therefore, there is a huge hidden system of something that this finance is for. Yeah. And, again, I go to space, breakaway civilization, the idea that that such vast sums of money represents a vast project. Well... To fake the second coming, it would or be any a, of any of that. Fake yeah. the second coming, you know, build colonies on the moon and Mars, you know, yeah. uh, what have you? Yeah. <laughs> it could be oh, all geez. sorts of things. You know? Oh gosh! Oh, Faking so the second coming of Christ wouldn't be that expensive, but you know, six six to eight trillion dollars worth of money 
that's entirely off the books, you know, that'll buy you a really nice space fleet and, yeah. <laughs> and some quality lodgings on the moon. You know? <laughs> Oh. You know, with a view over the pool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Gosh. That's the only thing that I can think of that would make sense of such enormous sums of money. Oh. Uh, and, and reasons for trying to keep them secret and, and have this all being done in the form of bearer bonds. And and the only other thing, like I say, is is a fallback financial system. Uh but it is a clear indicator that you have a breakaway civilization at work, number one. And number two, the fact that that someone's going to all this trouble to counterfeit it. And and let's go back to the Japanese bearer bond scandal. Those are fake. Okay, there's no doubt about it. But they are interesting fakes in that, that you have all this weird space yeah. symbolism on the back of them. And, and no one was ever arrested or prosecuted for counterfeiting. Them. Yeah, and, <laughs> okay. and they got caught. And I they mean, got caught. Probably yes. and, intentionally. And probably intentionally. You know, I've argued that case all along. That, yeah. you know, you, you don't just go bopping over the border to Switzerland with $134 billion of self-evidently counterfeit bonds right. and not expect the Italian authorities to take a little Good interest. Grief. <laughs> you know? so, so, yeah, they're, they're sending messages to, to this hidden system of finance and whatever it represents. Someone's sending messages saying, we know all about it and we can expose this at a drop of a hat. So whatever's going on right now in the financial world is huge. Yeah, it is. You know, there's there's a game that's off the books and that we're not being told, and that somebody I think is trying to tell us. You know, this has to do with space. Well, uh, this, has uh, has anyone been bumped off that might lately that might be? Um, oh, connected to all this? Yeah. Well, okay. <laughs> Not this is, uh, who knows? There, in in my blogs about the Italian bearer bond scandal, there have been people that have been that have bought some of these fake bonds and attempted to cash them in. Oh, all right, <laughs> for pennies on the dollar. You know, sure, I'll take a penny on a dollar if it's a billion dollar bearer bond. That's still a huge chunk of money. Yeah, <laughs> you know? you better believe it. Now here's the odd thing. In some instances. According to some Internet sources, and again, I, I normally am hesitant about appealing to Internet sources because anyone can get on there and say anything. All You're right? right. So in other words, I have not verified whether or not these stories are true. But they're interesting enough stories that they should be at least mentioned. Yeah. All right. In some of, in some of these versions of the story coming out of these fake bearer bond scandals, some versions have it that people have actually been able to cash these counter, so-called counterfeit bonds in for pennies on the dollar. Oh my goodness! Now, if those, if 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 those stories are true, then why on earth would the American government honor, in any degree, counterfeit bonds? Yeah. All right. In other words, if they're true then somebody does not want the story to get any further out there. Somebody's got a gun to somebody's head. Somebody's got a gun to some bingo. Yeah. Uh Now, there is another story out there of a man who attempted to cash one of these things in and was simply denied. And so according to the story, in a fit of despair... He murdered his wife, children, and then committed suicide. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Oh. Now, again, I haven't been able to verify the story, not yeah. even to find out who the man is. But again, assuming for the sake of argument that the story is true, number one, it doesn't make sense to me that yeah. anyone would be that much in despair for not being able to cash in a counterfeit bearer bond right. and therefore turn a gun on his wife and children oh. and then himself. Yeah. So in other words, I think if if the story of these deaths is true, then it is possible that he found out something and had to be taken out of the picture, permanently silenced. Wow. 
I think further that given the rash of all the bank resignations that has occurred... Oh, there has been hundreds of them. There has been hundreds of them. Oh. I think that this may somehow be connected to all of this. Whoa. Because we're dealing with huge amounts of money. We're dealing with huge amounts of, of gold. Mm-hmm. We're dealing with someone going, if indeed the story is true that these are counterfeits, all of them, yeah. not just the Kennedy bonds, but the Wilson bonds. If all of these bonds are fake, then someone is going to an extraordinary amount of effort to print up a lot of fake bearer bonds to build and construct fake strong boxes from the U.S. Federal Reserve System. Someone's going to an awful lot of effort, and effort implies the actual real existence of a hidden tier of finance. Yeah. And if, on the other hand, those Wilson bonds are indeed genuine, then they were being issued over amounts of gold that, on the official estimates of gold tonnage, far exceeded the amount of gold in existence to back them. In other words, they were real securities, but fraudulently issued. Wow. And therefore, that may be yet another aspect of the story as to why you have all of these nations insisting that their gold be repatriated to them. My goodness. Yeah, it's huge. Oh, yeah, this it's is huge. huge. This, is a, this, is, this is probably, I mean, forget about Iran and its silly little atomic bomb thing. Yeah. I mean. <laughs> that know. could be just a diversion. <laughs> that, that, yeah, that could be just a diversion. You know, <laughs> don't, look at, don't look at all of these trillions of dollars. Pay no attention to that man behind the curtain. Yeah. Manipulating all of these counterfeit securities. Oh my you know? goodness, Joseph! <laughs> and 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 the allusion to the Wizard of Oz is is not accidental because what is O Z an abbreviation for? Um, ounces. Yeah. What are what are the the story? What's the storyline of Dorothy and and the Tin Man and the Scarecrow and the Lion? What are they supposed to do? To go to Oz. Following what? The yellow brick road. The yellow <laughs> brick <laughs> road. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Oh my goodness. <laughs> no, this is this is something that's been well known to people that have looked at the Wizard of Oz. It's a huge political allegory. Yeah. On on you know uh, late nineteenth century and early twentieth century American finance and politics. That's exactly what it is. Yes. And, you know, the great wizard uh, is really just a man behind a, a curtain manipulating levers and pulling things and so on and so yeah. forth. So, yeah. <laughs> and incidentally, let's not forget about the Wicked Witch putting everybody to sleep in a field of poppies. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> we, know what, we know what flower poppies are. Yeah. Poppies are for. <laughs> So gee golly, we've got we've got yellow bricks and opium poppies in oh the children's gosh. fairy tale. Yeah, right. You know. Oh. So yeah, this this represents this this represents a huge story. And as of now, and I'm you know I'm I'm just speculating wildly off the top of my head with you is, is that as of now, I'm I'm suspecting that we're looking at either the actual instruments of or indicators of a vast hidden system tier of finance, Uh that that hidden system or tier of finance has something to do with the post-war arrangement between the the Nazi international and and the Western bankers, that number three, it represents some vast project, and the project may have been symbolized by the Japanese version of the bearer bond scandal with with the space shuttle and the moon and and the lunar excursion module in other words something to do with space yeah and finally you know to sum it up that someone was either double crossed or someone acquired information and says we know all about this and works but you know you stand in danger of having this whole fraud exposed so yeah are if if the Western bankers are in on it. Do you think they'd be a little panicked right now? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'd resign my job at the bank. <laughs> oh, gee. Oh, my 
Good grief. You know, the real question here, and, and it's interesting because Jim Mars, uh, as I told you as we were talking about this before we decided to do this show, well, Jim Mars emails me and asks me, you know, there's another aspect here that you haven't considered, and that is why is no one being prosecuted for counterfeiting these things? And, you know, that's a perfectly good question. If indeed they are counterfeit, then why are there no prosecutions that we can read about anywhere? Well, they're supposed to be caught. They are supposed to. Well, this is supposed to come out. Well, either that. His point is, is if there's no prosecutions, then the likelihood that this, these bonds are genuine goes up. Yes. And on the other hand, if they are counterfeit, as you say, the fact that there's no prosecution means that somebody is sending their messengers to to these Western elites with these counterfeit securities, and, you know, that's the gun to their head. They've got to let these people go yeah. and not prosecute because they're threatened with complete exposure as to what the game plan is and how it was all put into place. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. Well, don't get caught with a, a, a one billion in uh, counterfeit bonds, you must be caught with trillions. Yeah. That's your passport right there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, jeez. Oh, my exactly. gosh. Joseph. Oh. <laughs> yep. My goodness. In, yeah, and all of this implying amounts of gold bullion that officially never has existed. W- wasn't there a gigantic stash of gold that was placed in the Philippines? Well, I just got done talking about the, that. The, General it, Yamashita, Operation Golden Lily. Yeah. Yeah, that's exactly so. Yeah. Oh, gee. Now, you'll notice that I'm not going into all the, the woolly theories yeah. that are out there. Uh, and I don't want to mention any names. Most people listening to this will know who the names are that are promoting the idea that, oh, yes, you know, all of this represents the white hats and they're back on the scene and, you know, well, one elite is just as bad as another. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, um, I, I I don't see things that way and readers of my website will know there's one significant data point in all of these bearer bond scandals, particularly the ones from Italy, that the other people out there purveying their scenarios of love, light, and peace and the white hats, the white dragon society and so on coming in to save the day, mm-hmm. there's a significant piece of information that they have not encountered. <laughs> Which and is? I, I'm not going to say because it's it's in a white paper on, in the my oh. members area. Oh. I will say that there is a <clears throat> Venetian connection. Oh, okay. oh. <laughs> currently or in the past? Currently. Oh my goodness. Mm-hmm. My goodness. Well, Venice is very close to the Vatican. Um, no comment. <laughs> <laughs> no comment. In the Vatican Bank in uh, Panama, uh, you know. <laughs> well, let's let's put it this way. And I'm not going to get into any more speculation beyond what I'm going to say. Okay. Um, If you wanted to institute a global currency, what's the one institution that would be recognized globally? Uh, The Vatican. That you could do institute moral trust in. Bingo. The Vatican. Yeah. Well, name me one agency that has an office in every country of the world well, just exactly about so. it, you know exactly so and they have probably the finest intelligence oh, apparatus even better than the Mossad <laughs> well I, I used to tell my students George Ann in, in medieval history and, and some of them may be listening to this broadcast I used to tell my students, they'll recognize this phrase, that the oldest political chancery in continuous operation in the world, Mm -hmm. and therefore the most experienced, is the Vatican. Mm -hmm. And the one with the widest spread intelligence, human intelligence on the ground network, 
in the world is the Vatican. Yes. And secondarily, you know, following the same logic, the, the, right behind it would be the Orthodox churches of the East. Yeah. Yep. Oh, my goodness, Joseph. Yeah. Uh, this is so full of intrigue. Oh, yes, it is. <laughs> yeah, it, you couldn't write a better... John Le Carre, Robert Ludlum spy novel. Yeah. <laughs> but then, Gosh. All of this. Oh. Yeah, but like I say, there's there's a significant piece of the puzzle that that most of those out there are missing, and it's got directly to do with with the Italian Barabon scandals, where they were seized, where they were going, and a hidden player that that uh, has some interesting, uh, I think, Venetian. Overtones. Uh-huh. So you know, in every in every way that you analyze these things, someone is sending messages to someone else. Oh yeah. And I think the people on the receiving end of the message are these Western financial elites and this hidden tier of finance, and someone else that is privy to the secret and may have been involved with it has pulled the plug. And it goes back to my scenario that you know, I think we're seeing factional infighting within the New World Order crowd. Oh. And someone's decided, no, we're not going to play by your rules anymore. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Oh, my goodness. So that's, it's, it, all of this has got to have them uh, a little bit sleepless in the city of London and, and uh, Wall Street uh, and Frankfurt. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I, think, uh, I think this whole thing is... is uh, it's it's going to be interesting to me just to make a little prediction here. I, I think we're going to see number one more of these types of events, mm. and number two, the really interesting thing to know, to see what will happen if more events like this happen, or the story is attempted to be buried. I think you're going to see the Russians start commenting on it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And, you know, once once you move them into the picture and they start commenting on all of this, uh, if 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 the West is not successful in in bottling up this story and making it disappear, and I don't think they will be, then I think eventually you're going to start seeing some interesting commentary coming out of the Far East on the internet. I think you're going to see some interesting commentary coming out of the Russians uh, about all this. Just a guess, you know, just a prediction. Just a prediction. (laughs) Just a prediction. (laughs) You know, it could be entirely off the wall. It could be entirely wrong. Uh, But uh, I have my reasons for saying that. And if it comes true, I'll divulge them. (laughs) Oh, my goodness. Oh, Joseph. Fascinating. Absolutely fascinating. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Well, it does take a lot of money to do off-world projects. Yeah, it, it, it takes a lot of money to fund a secret space program. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sure Using does. Using off-the-books technology. <laughs> I mean, you know, they're swiping uh, 401ks, yep. pension funds. Yep. They're they are. It, it's this giant sucking sound. <laughs> yeah, they're 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 looting. Yeah. And the looting. It's interesting, you know, to to draw the analogy of the gun to the head. Let's remember that the the looting of uh, that started all these accounts with uh, what was it AIG and, and uh, yeah oh shoot I want to say Morgan but that's not right but anyway the, the looting that started you, you you had these people that were demanding all of this stuff acting as if someone had the gun to their head and was saying we want our money we don't care how you get it yeah. Uh, well, like I said, you start playing with the likes of Martin Borman and Nazi International, and you're dealing with Dick Cheney without the warmth and charm. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, gee. Oh, yeah, it's a, it's a fascinating story, and, and we're, we haven't seen the end of it yet. You know, These are my speculations. These are my guesses. Other people have their guesses and speculations. And we could all be right. We could all be wrong. So, you know, time will tell. But... But at the minimum, we're dealing with a hidden tier of finance. We're dealing with something requiring vast sums of money. And I think the messages were given on those Japanese bonds with with the symbols from space. Wow. (laughs) Wow, wow, wow. Well, remember the Chinese um, 
no, it was the Japanese um, last year or maybe the year before. Yeah. They released uh, a video about the moon. Yes, I do remember that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. Well, again, exactly. You're you're connecting exactly the dots that I I think people need to be connecting here. The Japanese released that. And that the Chinese was... have indicated that, uh, yeah, we want to go to the moon. Yeah. The Russians and the Germans are are you know doing all sorts of uh, practical things to to plan for a manned mission to Mars. So you know if indeed there has been something going on in space that somebody doesn't want the rest of the world to know. And yeah, all of these dots are being connected in very interesting ways. And what does Israel want to do? It wants to go bomb Iran. Well, you know, <laughs> the Likud are oh, are gosh. nuttier than the dummy crooks and Republic thugs over here. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Good grief! Yeah, it's it's yeah, it's it's a huge story. It certainly is, Joseph. Oh. My goodness. Wow. <laughs> My gosh. I'm I'm sort of speechless. <laughs> it leaves you speechless. Yeah. It does leave you speechless because these are guesses. Mm-hmm. Nothing more. They're an interesting way of connecting the dots. But I think the conclusions that I'm entertaining are at least viable. They're at yeah. least reasonable uh, conclusions well, to draw. Like the um, guys that got caught by the Italian police. Uh-huh. I mean, somebody had to clue someone in. Exactly. That, you know, watch for these guys. They've got uh, some stuff you'd be interested in. Well, here's the thing. In the Spanish... In the Spanish seizure Mm -hmm. and in the second Italian seizure Mm -hmm. the stories that have been circulating from credible sources do indicate that the Spanish and Italian authorities were assisted in these operations by the US Secret Service Mm -hmm. so in other words this implies that there is an operation going on in the world that is of concern Mm -hmm. for US Treasury Department officials yeah. And again, it's yet another indicator that there's this hidden tier of finance um, that that they are concerned could could affect the national security somehow. So every way you spin this, yeah, the, these arrests could not have been made without someone on the inside. So. Uh, there is a huge game afoot. Uh, oh, yeah. A huge, huge game. Yeah. Uh, I certainly don't claim that my speculations are any better or worse than anybody else's. But one thing that I want people to notice, I am not claiming on my speculation to be based upon insider knowledge or whistleblower testimony. Yeah. I am simply reasoning a case from the evident known facts. Yeah. And and one fact which the others who are claiming insider sources and, and whistleblower sorts of sources, there is a detail that, and it's a very obvious one, they just haven't thought about it, because, you know, they're too busy going after their insider sources and so on to look at the story. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and... And that little detail, like I say, is is very interesting. Oh, <laughs> it has these has these strange little Venetian overtones. <laughs> so, uh, you know that ought to tell somebody something. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I know it would tell Webster sorry, Webster Tarpley something. Yes, it would. <laughs> yes, it would. Oh my but, goodness, you know, Joseph. Uh, I don't I don't think Mr. Tarpley's uh, entirely seen the entire picture himself. Um, you know these these banksters are a tricky lot, and uh, they're not all they're not all playing the same game. Yeah, you know, obviously. You know, we we'd like to think that the Anglo-American 
corporate banking elite is that the whole banking elite the world over is is playing with the same cards and for the same goal. I don't think that's true. No, uh, I don't either. <laughs> uh, Oh. I think I think I think the the bankers in the city of London and New York City have convinced themselves